Take keep it too hard. We the best music. Take keep fuck these niggas up. Another one. Another one. Another one. DJ Khaled. The spirit of Detroit. Speaking of underrated, our next topic is regarding our young head coach, Brian Flores. I think it's fair to say, through two seasons, Flores has earned some rope. He came in to an impossible situation, helped strip down a roster and build a new culture. Because remember, the 2019 Miami Dolphins held the NFL record and still hold the NFL record for having the most players start for them in a season. And that's because the team is constantly shuffling new guys in and out, trying to find guys who can play or become building blocks for future seasons. The fact that he was able to manage a team with that much roster fluctuation is insane. And despite all that turnover and an incredibly rough start, Miami finished the 2019 season five and four with a huge victory yeah, yeah, up in Fox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a turn up, I'm a hater, every chance that I get. I'm one of the biggest watchers they got, I don't care if that shit hurts. You, two. This is what happened, this is what y'all thought when y'all clicked the video. They're doing in Miami. Uh, it's unethical and morally reprehensible as far as I'm concerned, because we understand how dangerous football is as a game. Putting guys out there in this type of danger is a problem, but you can put that aside. I think as an employer, you have an obligation. Think, oh man, coaches don't tank, players don't, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I'd ask for a trade. Mick well, already did. They all do. I, I, I would, I, I would ask for a trade. If I'm a player, if I'm, if I'm Xavier Howard, and I'm looking at us call this defense right here, I'm like, okay, I see what this is for real. And that was like 30-20. And, and, and listen, this is what everybody was thinking last night. I put, the, I put the same tweet up. I was like, Miami really tanking? Like, they... not talking about uh, tanking, but the Lions. Uh, I'm talking about roster fluctuation. The Lions brought in some guys today. You know, they made some moves. They got my guy uh, Craig Reynolds back, the legend of Craig Reynolds. And I was really thinking this over the weekend that, you know, this team is in a very good position um, because this is an evaluation year. Everything is an evaluation. Uh, we're at ground zero of a rebuild. We're building a culture. Uh, we're trading for players. We're being aggressive with the waiver wire. We're being aggressive with the market. And this was just reminiscent to me of the Miami Dolphins of 2019. You know, uh, they brought in about 10 guys to sign at the start of, you know, at the con at the conclusion of training camp. You know, and, and then they, st they stayed fluctuating their roster, trading for players, trading players away, uh, making different moves. And they came away with draft picks, they came away with capital, they got rid of bad contracts, and they had the tools to succeed. The Detroit Lions literally are doing the same thing and it's rem reminiscent. Now, it's gonna be interesting to see during the season, are they gonna move the pieces like Miami did? Miami had players on their roster go from practice squad, get activated, see what they can do. If they couldn't, if they couldn't go, if they, if they couldn't play well rather, you know, oh, okay, well, <laughs> might just have to get rid of them. And you know, they had some players who really had developed an air of competition because it was competition at every level. You know, you had that evaluation year and you wanted to get your draft picks, you wanted to get your capital, you brought in the free agents you wanted, you brought in the team you wanted, you brought in the draft picks. And then you go, you go ahead and you know, you put together something in 2020 that was pretty special, I would say, especially for a team and you know, in 20, 2018, they had a totally different roster, almost 60% turnover in 2019. And that's what they came into. It's real bizarre uh, what's going on in Detroit right now. You know, you had Hodge come in. Um, you had, uh, for those who don't know, Kadero Hodge, uh, the kicker, Austin Siebert. You just got your uh, practice squad guys ready to go. Dedrick Mills, uh Craig, Montez, you got all these players. And now, you know, the job's not done. You know, Coach Campbell said himself, I'm gonna put the best best people on this roster. And even if it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't work out that way, I'm gonna make sure we do our due diligence. And it just, it just so happens that 
everything's up for grabs this year. You know, we're going to see if guys can play. We're going to give guys a chance. That's why you see that the roster is, you know, 80% 20-year-olds. That's why you see that the roster is um, everybody's literally 25. The secondary, one of the youngest units in the league, you know. What's bizarre to me is the moving pieces going forward. Who's going to be on this team maybe a year from now? Who's going to be a baller? Who's going to develop? Because we're going to give guys an opportunity. Coach Campbell talked about Tavante Beckett. And Tavante Beckett just needs a year of physically, mentally growing the system. And then he could probably be on the roster. And it's, it's very factual. Because when you have 10, 10 or 13 picks next year, you bring in those players. You're going to bring in a linebacker. You're going to bring in... You know, you're going to have, you know, Barnes, maybe re-sign Anzalone. It's going to be a very interesting move ahead. I'm not going to get too close to players. I think the only one guaranteed a roster spot is golf right now. But even him, they, you're still going to bring in a quarterback to compete. You're still going to bring in a quarterback, you know, I think to, to move forward. This team, by far, is moving in the right direction. They're moving ruthlessly. I would say they're moving ruthlessly. Um, maybe that sounds terrible, but they're not being afraid to move on from players that they feel is a mistake. Uh, Jelani Tavai, as of years past, they would have just kept, you know, let's do it till the contract runs out and just not resign him, like the deal with Jerry Davis. For me, this team is going to utilize the waiver wire. Effectively, I see them doing it. I can't speak to the players that they have or they got because I, I've never heard of nobody. <laughs> you know, I've never heard of no clowns. But I do know that wa waiver wire centric teams, teams that pay attention to everybody's cuts and trades and and just being aggressive. Those teams know their weaknesses. They know they need something. You know, when Glenn, uh, John Dorsey was at Kansas City. He brought guys in. He brought eight guys in uh, after training camp. You know, we, we have the history here to to make that move, to make that uh, roster decision, because we're going to have 100 million in cap next year. We're going to have, um, what, 35, 40 players, 50 players signed. And then we could just build on the talent that we do have. You're going to have 13 picks. If they don't trade them all away, it's just really reminiscent to me of how the how the Dolphins were. You know, the Dolphins utilized the waiver wire. They had roster cuts, and the point of emphasis is they used this that first year in the rebuild as an evaluation year. I myself, I need to trust the process more. I think I can speak for every Lions fan here. I need to trust the process more. I'm going to trust the players um, that they bring in. I'm not going to call them bums till they play. If you play like a bum, you a bum. But I'm going to trust the process. I think um, I'm not going to get too close to the players because I don't know who's going to be here a year or two years from now. But I see this team is moving differently. They're giving guys. They're not. They're not giving guys the benefit of the doubt no more. They're not. We're just going to keep Robbie Coleman, you know, on the active roster. And we're going to cut someone who earned their spot. No, we're going to look. Robbie Coleman is a practice squad player at this point in his career. And, you know, they cut him and they were honest with him. And, you know, hey, you're on the practice squad. Javon McKinley did work. He made the team. Tom Kennedy did work, made the team. And Benson, obviously, PFF grade is amazing for him. I'm not too concerned about what this team is doing anymore. We have so many cuts. And we're going to have cuts and more cuts and more cuts. And, you know, due to COVID, you know, someone might get COVID on the team. God forbid. But you you can you have the ability to bring those practice squad guys, squad guys up. The practice squad has have, has to be as competitive as possible. Miami. Miami got rid of players that were could start on any roster. They had to. 
They had to for cap reasons, and they had to bring guys up from the practice squad that were beneficial to what they were doing. And they did, and they lucked out. Those players were talented. So our practice squad is going to be the rudiments of, of, of building a team and developing. Those guys can still develop. Like, comment, subscribe for more entertaining content like this. Uh, love y'all.